Hello everybody, Steve here with another video. Happy to be back recording. Was away for a little while, but I'm um, happy to be back now. And what I wanna talk about today is a topic that has been pretty much played out in the news the last couple of weeks, the last month, I would say. And that's the uh, Jesse Smollett story. But I'm gonna look at it in perhaps a different light. So. What we're going to talk about today is Jesse Smollett and the culture of narcissism. And I'm going to answer three questions. We're going to pose three questions and then I'll attempt to answer them. And those questions are, what causes a person to create false scenarios that inevitably lead to the destruction of lives as they create these false narratives? The second question is, why does the culture seem to affirm and support narcissistic tendencies? And then number three, what can we do to fight the downward spiral of narcissism in our own lives? Well, those of us who have experienced the effects of narcissism know how destructive it can be in our lives. But what would cause a person like Jesse Smollett to create a false scenario uh, like the one that he did, which could, in fact, destroy lives if left unchecked, or at least destroy relationships, destroy racial harmony, destroy uh, property, because if people riot, they inevitably destroy property, and just cause general unrest in our culture. What would cause a person to do that? I think the answer is in whole or at least in part answered by Jesse Smollett's own narcissism. Now, we don't know 100% of the reason why he did this, but what we can pretty much ascertain is that narcissism had a big part in it. And why do I say that? Because one of the reasons he did it was to get his name out there was to increase his fame was to make his name basically a household name which in fact he did do because nobody at least i didn't and i, I would say probably a lot of people including me never heard of jesse smollett and uh, probably if you didn't watch empire the show that he's on like i didn't watch it uh, you probably never heard of this person before. So what happened? As soon as he made the allegations, he became a household name. He was on every news broadcast, well, just about every. Uh, he was in the paper, you know, he was in magazines, and everybody was talking about how Jesse Smollett was, was uh, beat up by supposedly some Trump-supporting, MAGA hat-wearing guys who just decided to beat him up, and then on top of that, put a noose on his neck to further humiliate him. And um, and so everybody was pretty much, you know, listening to this story. Everybody was pretty much trying to um, say that he was a victim and that he was suffering and that they needed to find uh, the, this racially motivated hate crime per perpetrators uh, on Jesse Smollett. So Jesse Smollett's narcissism apparently worked. However, what he didn't realize, I think, was the trail of evidence that he left and that people would dig deep enough and, and, and realize that some of the things that happened sounded a little ridiculous. Now, everybody knows the story. I'm not gonna go over all of the things that um, the Chicago Police Department found out. And even our common sense would probably tell us that something sounded a little fishy with what was going on. But really, that's how, unfortunately, uh, narcissists often operate. They do things without any thought of what their actions are going to do to the other other people. And uh, I don't think Jesse Smollett for one second thought about what his actions would 
would cause because maybe he didn't think that it would be such a big thing. Maybe he just thought that, oh yeah, my name will get out there and, and people will know who I am and I'll have my fame. But uh, he did not give thought to the consequences of, of his actions. And that's what happens with a lot of narcissists. They will, you know, they will gaslight, they will do all of these various different things to you with no thought of how this affects you. Because why? They have no empathy. And it appears that Jesse Smuller had no empathy for anybody uh, but himself and what would happen. And he, he may have even thought that the, the guys that he allegedly paid to do this might get caught. He might have thought about that, but he showed no concern real really for, for them. You know, he figured that he was paying them and they were basically on their own. He didn't give any thought to say, well, if they get caught, then, you know, they're basically on, on their own. I'm not going to say anything about it because I would be giving myself away. So Jesse Smollett's narcissism did not allow for any kind of concern or empathy for anybody but himself. So now let's go to the second question, which kind of broadens it a little bit. Why does the culture seem to affirm and support narcissistic tendencies? And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, our culture basically is a very narcissistic one. Uh, we tend to only think about ourselves and our own well-being, our, our own mental health, and that is often at the expense of others. And again, we see that there is uh, no empathy with narcissists, meaning that, you know, they have no, you know, what, or whatever affects us is not even in their depth of field, whether it's covert, covert narcissism or any other kind of narcissism. Um, it's always them. It's always about their needs and it's always about their feelings of, of being superior. It's all about their feelings of being on top and getting what they want and getting what they need and getting what they think they deserve. And another thing about narcissists I notice, as in the case with Jesse Smollett as well, is that they play the victim very well. They, they, uh, if you notice in Jesse Smollett's interviews, he was basically playing the victim and saying, oh, this because I'm this and because I'm that, because I'm gay and I'm black, and I'm, tar I'm being targeted and our whole society is, is, is full of people who target other people and so forth and so on. And um, that's basically what narcissists do, even in our own lives, in our own personal lives. We see that the narcissist plays the victim. Whenever you come to a narcissist with how you feel or your true feelings about what they've done. They always play the victim. And so that's, a, that's, a, that's I think that's a major way how the culture encourages uh, narcissism because we live in a, vict a society of victimization, victimhood. Everybody's a victim. Everybody has had something done to them that they need redress. And uh, we basically decided that, you know, everybody's feelings are, are important you know, except for the ones who are being affected by those feelings being important. And that's that that gets into the whole uh, narcissistic um, those who are suffering from uh, narcissistic abuse because we are the real victims. But of course, our voices are not heard by the narcissists because they feel that they are the victims. So narcissism is is intertwined in our society and in our culture now. And that's why it's very difficult to, 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 to battle because even if you go for counseling or, you know, if you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, uh, most of them are not aware of narcissism, so they can't really help you. You know, if you go to couples counseling, you know, in a marriage or what, or whatever the case might be, that person most likely is not trained in narcissistic personality disorder and so the narcissist on victimization will always win in counseling sessions if the counselor is not 
trained in narcissistic personality disorder because the narcissist is so good at it. You cannot beat a narcissist when it comes to claiming victimization, when it comes to, you know, telling a story uh, of, of how they have been abused and hurt. You cannot beat a narcissist at that because they're so convincing. It's like they're all Academy Award winners. So that's almost a hopeless case. If you're looking for, for help or redress from those in the mental health uh, profession, especially those who are not trained in the personality disorders. So the last question is what can we do to fight the downward spiral of narcissism in our own lives? And that's a very difficult task. I'm not going to lie. Uh, just from talking to many, many, many people who have been affected by narcissism, there is always pain and suffering that is inevitably going to go with that. And it's very hard because most most people who are professionals in the area of narcissistic personality disorder say that a person can never be healed from that because it's been so ingrained in them since they were a child that it's very, very difficult for a person who is a narcissist to become anywhere near normal or to give up that narcissism. So, I mean, I hate to sound gloomy and, and sound uh, so negative over it, but, you know, from what my research and just from my uh, own personal interactions with, with narcissists and those that have been affected, it is very, very difficult to overcome. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very, very difficult. So in my, uh, in my videos, since I always come from a Christian perspective, I think that one of the things that we can do, if you're a Christian, I think one of the things that you can do is, is to work on yourself. And I think that's good advice for anybody, not just Christians, is to work on yourself and understand what narcissism is and understand what it does and understand the signs of, of narcissism in your own life uh, or, or the people in your life that are narcissists. Understand what the commonalities of it are. And, and, and once you understand and once you can see if somebody is, or try to ascertain that somebody is demonstrating narcissistic tendencies, then you can can start to prepare yourself and, and educate yourself and become more aware of what's going on. And, and, and knowing what's going on, I think that's a big part of getting yourself to the place where you can start to heal and, and understand what you yourself have to do. For the Christian, you have the resources of God's Word, the Bible, to read and to strengthen you. And you also have a community of, of believers, other people who are Christians that will also uh, help you to get through this um, and help you to, to, to gain strength, help you to understand who you are, how you've been hurt, um, to forgive yourself. And, and I think that's a big thing. Um, those of us who've been abused by narcissists need to forgive ourselves first so that we can then uh, forgive others, move on, get strong, and then do what we need to do to uh, strengthen our own lives. And uh, the reason I say that, and I'm going to close, the reason I say that we need to forgive ourselves is because a lot of us have been in narcissistic situations for a long time. And sometimes we blame ourselves for staying in situations, allowing ourselves to be uh, abused by the narcissist in, in many different kinds of ways. And we carry that hurt and we carry that guilt. And um, we say, well, I don't, I don't know why I should have left a long time ago. Or I should have done this. I should have done that. So the first thing you need to do, my friends, is forgive yourself. And say, you know, I did the best that I could under the circumstances. I didn't know what was really going on. I knew something was wrong, but I wanted to remain 
in the relationship to see if it was going to work, whether it was for children or or for whatever, or maybe it's just out of pure love of the person you wanted to kind of hang in there. And um, for whatever reason, the abuse continued and you blame yourself. So, you know, please do forgive yourself first. God forgives you for whatever thing that you've done wrong. God will forgive the narcissist if, it, narcissist if the narcissist asks for forgiveness and changes his ways or her ways, God will forgive. So certainly forgive yourself, educate yourself, pray, you know, get into the, 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 the word of God, get into the Bible because there's plenty of wisdom in there that will help you. So um, let this be a new beginning for you. If you're listening to this video and um, you think you've been abused or under the thumb of a narcissist, read. There's a ton of stuff on YouTube. There's a ton of articles on the web. Do your research. Get the help you need. And you're well on your way to recovering from narcissistic abuse. Anyway, thanks for listening. God bless you. And we will see you next time.